Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you for joining us. Get your Bible if you can right now. Open it with me to 2 Peter and the end of chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1, Lord willing, today and tomorrow will complete this first chapter in our verse-by-verse walk through the book of 2 Peter. Also, while you're getting your Bible out, get something on which you can jot some notes. We've got some key things to make mention of here today, some things that I think would really help you grow in the Lord. It's going to get to the real core purpose of why God designed the local church. I hope you're part of a local church. Now, while you're getting your Bible out and getting something on which you can jot some notes, be ready to get some free gospel tracts from us. As my announcer has already said, this radio ministry is the radio arm of a larger ministry called Bible Tracks Incorporated, and that word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. I'm referring to an evangelism tool, a gospel tract, a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. I want to highlight one of the tracts that's in a sample packet that I really want to put into your hand. All the tracts are free. Please, let's you and I become partners, but I'll say more about the tracts in a moment. Let me prepare us for our Bible study by asking this question. How many Bibles do you actually have in your home? Can you give an accurate count? Now, I'm not concerned about which translation you've got there. Include all of them. And don't forget to include the Bible that's on your computer or on your iPhone, too. They count in all this survey. It's almost unbelievable, isn't it, how many Bibles Americans own? So many places in our world, the believers there really don't have their own personal copy of Scripture. And we got so many. Well, probably you already know that I really don't care about the number of Bibles you own. What I do care about, what you and I should care about with each other and ourselves is what are we doing with all these Bibles? Do you and I read our Bibles? Do we ever study it in depth? Do you and I ever meditate on Scripture? Are we memorizing any portions of the Bible? Here in 2 Peter chapter 1, at the end of it, God says that our written Bible is a more reliable source for truth than even an apostle's personal experience with Jesus. But then, then we are told why God has given us his word. Now, the issue today is focused on what God wants his Bible to do in our lives. That's where we're headed today. Get your Bible open to 2 Peter and chapter 1. I mentioned those gospel tracts a moment ago. The one in my hand right now is entitled, Two Kinds of Death. Two kinds of death. Dear beloved, there are only two kinds of death. Now, your physical body can die multiples of ways. It can die of old age. It can die of a car accident. It can die of cancer and so on and so on. But you and I are either going to die in Christ as our Savior, or we're going to die outside of Christ without him being our Savior. If we die in Christ, we go to heaven. If we die without Christ, we do not go to heaven. We go to the lake of fire. This clear gospel tract lays out the two kinds of death. It begins with this verse. And you hath he quickened or made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin. There is physical life and physical death. There is spiritual life, 
but we all come into this world, we're born into this world physically, being spiritually dead. We need to be born again. We need to be regenerated. And this gospel track is going to lay out the simple truth that people, all people are dead. They need life, and this life is found in Jesus Christ. It's a great tool, two kinds of death. It's in that sample packet I want to give to you. At the end of the program, be ready, jot down how to contact us, give us your name and mailing address. We'll send you that sample packet free of charge. If you cannot wait to the end of the program, go to our website, which is www.bibletracksinc.org. If your Bible is open to 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 19 begins this way. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well, that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. That's the end of the chapter. Now, yesterday, as I began dealing Dealing with these three verses, I gave three words that would be my outline, and all three words begin with the letter R. The words are this, reliability, reliability. Word number two is role, R-O-L-E, role. The third one is the word revelation. I spoke about the Bible's reliability on yesterday's broadcast. So today, let's look at the role, R-O-L-E, the, the role of the Bible in our lives. What part in our lives does God want the Bible to play? Now, there is a number of places, actually, we could go in the Word of God that would speak on other roles that the Bible plays. For instance, the Bible, we're told, can make us wise unto salvation. That's a role. The Bible is the sword of the Spirit when we're facing Satan's attack. That's a role. The Bible is a light unto our path to give us guidance. There's another role. And the Bible helps us not to commit sin. That's a critical role. All of these are true. But here in 2 Peter, the people were needing to grow in Christ. They were hearing false teachers say wicked things as they were, as if these things that the teachers were saying were spiritually true. So in light of the original reader's situation, Peter says they needed to take heed to the Bible. What role does the Bible play in our lives when theological liberalism abounds? and when spiritual leaders are saying that a child of God can be saved and yet live a wicked worldly life? Well, verse 19 says that believers do well to take heed to the Bible. Then verse 19 uses a word picture. Verse 19 says that we need to take heed to the Bible as if it were a light Now, the word there, the Greek word is luknos. It means a candle. We need to take heed to the Bible as if it were a light, a candle in a dark place. Now, a candle in a dark room or even more so in a cave would draw everybody's attention. It would draw us to itself. The word take heed means to hold your mind onto something. It means to pay attention to. It means to apply yourself to something. Now, in a dark room, I would certainly pay close attention to that candle. It would be my only source to really know what is going on around me. I would trust what the candle showed me. But then verse 19 goes on and alters the word picture. We are to take heed to the Bible as if it were the only candle in a dark room. But then it says we are to do this until the day dawn. We are to do this until the day star or the morning light shines. Now, it shines not on the outside, but shines in our hearts. Just what is meant here by this day star? Well, number one, One godly view is that the day star refers to Jesus at his second coming, and believers are to keep their focus on the Word of God until they see Jesus. Friend, that's a godly piece of advice. But there's another view, also a godly view, which says this, 
the day star is a reference, yes, to Jesus, but it refers to the person and the character of Jesus shining in and out of our day-to-day lives. Those who hold to this view say we need to focus our minds and our hearts on God's word because that word, as we meditate on it, as we study it, as we practice it, the word of God will cause us to grow more and more into the person of Christ, into his character. Now, honestly, I think both views are valuable and are good and useful. Let's keep both of them. But please, Notice where God's word needs to shine. It's supposed to shine in our hearts. Now, I want my Bible to be the focus and shine in the church services I attend, especially if I'm the one preaching. I want the word of God to shine there in the service, but that's not what the verse says. God wants the word of God to shine in your heart and in my heart. Now, by the word heart, It's referring to our minds. It's referring to our souls. It's referring to that place in us where decisions are made and where our worldview is shaped. For our hearts to have Scripture shine in it, we must therefore memorize it, meditate on it so that it can do the shining work. That means we're going to have to mull over the Word of God as we walk through our day, as we're doing the dishes, as we're mowing the lawn, as we're going to sleep, as we're rising up, as we're brushing our teeth, and all those other occasions in our day-to-day life lives. We're going to have to be mulling over the Word of God. This is the role God's Word is intended to play in our lives, according to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. This is the role that will protect us from false, weird, and worldly mindsets of teachers who shout so loudly with what they say in our day. So, in all that, let me end with a couple of questions here for you and for me. Since God invented the local church to be a place where we urge one another onto godliness, according to Hebrews chapter 10, who is the person? Do you see the person? Can you name them? Who is the person holding you personally accountable in this area of letting God's word shine in your heart. You say, Brother Mark, what do you mean by that? I'm glad you ask. Who is the person who regularly, whether it's daily, whether it's every other day, every third day, whatever the case may be, who is the person that regularly asks you these kinds of questions? Question number one, where did you read in the word of God today? Question number two, What key truth did you learn from the passage you read today? And here's a question number three. What verse or set of verses are you memorizing this week to become more like Jesus Christ and to grow into him or to conquer some sin issue that you're battling? You see, this is what local churches are supposed to be about. We're supposed to be aiding one another, urging one another, prompting one another into love and good works and growing in grace and in knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So who is your accountability partner, my friend? Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, You can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.